Oh my god, I'm so excited to talk to you guys about this series. This series is an absolute classic in my opinion and deserves to be on almost every single shelf available in your manga collection. Join me as we talk about Azumanga Dio. That man and his merch. Hello and welcome to That Man. That is my merchandise and this is Azumanga Dio the Omnibus Edition. This has been created by Kiyohiko Azuma, the same author as Yotsuba. That's right, I'm going to tie this into Yotsuba as well because that one is great. Enjoy everything. And this one was a series that I picked up years and years and years ago when they were releasing them. I think it was, I can't remember who it was. It was some, was it Tokyo Pop? No. Dembabu? No, I can't remember who it was. It was somebody else who was releasing them all separately. And then it's been collected and reprinted by Yen Press in a complete edition. Now, I only had volume one of the series. And I was quite unsure about how I felt with it. Keep in mind, this was probably around 2005, 2006. The Moe genre wasn't exactly what it is now, where we have stuff like Girls and Panzer, Love Live, Look, even Lucky Star wasn't even a thing when I read this originally. So the idea behind cute girls doing things wasn't really a thing that I kind of knew much about. I knew about those other things, you know, cute girls with tentacles, but I never really saw much of a Moe series. And as in Manga Daiwa, when I first read it, I was just kind of like, oh, this is just stupid. And originally it was something that I was kind of like, no, no, it's not doing anything for me. And then I read all of it and I was just like, yeah, that was a thing. And then I reread it a few, about a year later. I was just like, oh, I'm going to get rid of all, a few old manga. And I was just like, oh, that one. I'll, and then I was like, I'll reread it. And then something made me laugh I can't remember what it was but something made me giggle and I don't know what it was it just something about it just clicked and I absolutely adored what my what I read of it unfortunately at that time I genuinely didn't have the money to invest in other volumes in uh, to invest in other series like the whole series the, the series has actually been out of print for a few days a short while and the prices were rising and keep in mind we didn't really have the stuff like Amazon and uh, online services to make it as easy as it is now to just track down some of these old books and I'm not gonna lie it wasn't easy just buy a manga um, once Tokyo Pop went like, that was kind of it really it's like Viz kind of just took over all of the shelves so stuff like Asin Manga Dio I never really read it and I loved it and as soon as I saw this, I saw it in the sh on the shelf once I was like, ah, they've re-released it and I was just like, I need it and I picked it up. I read this about a year ago and I was just like, oh, you know what, I need this, I need, I need this in my life and I, I enjoyed it so much. In fact, one of the things I actually found interesting was how I am... Um, Originally, I really enjoyed the antics of the children, and I still do, but now it's the teachers and their bitter, um, sarcastic view on life that I actually get away with a little bit more in the humour. So, this is the stuff I kind of want to talk about. We've got multiple different characters. We have... Oh, where are we going? We have Sakaki. She is a strong and silent character. We see in so many tropes that... It's like the strong, mature looking one, but absolutely loves adorable things. We have characters like, in fact, this character reminds me a little bit of uh, Nico Robin. And more recently, she really reminds me of um, Komi from Komi Can't Communicate. Another great series that you can check out uh, my review on up there or somewhere on the channel. Check out the channel. And um, we also have Chio. A a, 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 a tiny, tiny, small child who is absolutely smart as out. Also, she looks a lot like Yotsuba, the series that uh, the creator would eventually go on. 
we have Tomo, who is the mouth, the sarcastic, the, the, the one who just kind of like, she's rude, she's obnoxious. We have Yomi, she is the one who is obsessing about her weight. She's not the most fun character, to be honest. And we also have Osaka, who is... She's different. She's definitely different. And each of these characters makes up a nice little group that we managed to get a lot of fun, different stories about. Now, these are actually largely for Koma. So, as you can see here, you get a lot of content. There's four stories or four little comics on each page. So, which means this is an absolute bumper edition of amazingness. And we have a lot of great interest in character development. We have a lot of great character interactions. For example, we have Sakaki and Chio always end up kind of being fun together where Sakaki just like kind of imagines like Chio just being like this weird like child but then her father's like a stuffed animal and then uh, Osaka just imagines like Chio would just like fly away with her pigtails and stuff like that and the stuff's so stupid but it's so fun you will enjoy it it's one of those series that you can kind of just you can pick up any page more or less and you can just get some fun out of it so even for example here like this is stuff that you kind of see so we have interactions between the teachers the teachers actually make this for me because like, we have the teachers where one of them is just kind of like she's more sensible but she doesn't have much look with um, anything whereas you've got the other one who's kind of like who got into teaching for the money Remember that? Remember when teaching was a great paying job? <laughs> but she just doesn't like it and she's kind of lazy and just like... And they kind of made me just laugh more because now I'm this bitter and twisted angry person who hates doing like real work and it's just kind of like, uh, yeah, do that, yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah, I don't really care anymore. And it's a nice social interaction of kind of how people change when things do change, if you know what I mean. Um, there is a few things I don't like, and that is one of the other teachers who's just kind of like, they basically play him as a paedophile for laughs. He's just kind of like, wear school uniforms. And they're just like, what the hell? No, it's just like, how do you think they got this job? And then it's just like, it turns out he's a really nice, loving father with a child. And his wife's absolutely beautiful, but he still has this weird fetish for girls in swimsuits. And it's like, yeah, not aged well. And even in Lucky Star, they kind of had a same character where the the um the character's dad was just like he was basically a paedophile, and they were just like they played up for laughs. And it's still seen to this day where they have this weird weird teacher who's like basically a paedophile and they're just like yeah look at that look at that he likes you girls and I'm just like no no on the other hand you can kind of on the other hand you can kind of imagine it being them addressing some of the people who really 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 like these kind of series you see them and then say I love Kana she is my favourite character in Dragon Maid. I want to see her in swimsuits. And we do get that weird, weird part of the fandom still, unfortunately. And these still kind of make fun of them, but it still doesn't really particularly work well. Um, it's still kind of creepy. But on the other hand, this series is just so much fun and I really implore people, if you like gag manga, if you like comedy manga, check this one out. You can get the whole volume. I think I paid about 15 to 17 quid or something like that for about a year ago. 
I don't know if it's in print. I don't see it very often anymore. It's Yen Press, so I'm kind of assuming it is in print. Just, uh, it's kind of fell into obscurity a little bit. It's, I even found volume one of the uh, the anime. Um, there's been no Blu-ray release over here because no one wants to buy it. Hmm. But yeah, even volume one of the DVD pre-owned was like 10 quid and it's like four episodes and I was like, I really want it! And I was just like, I'm not paying 10 quid for it. No, no, that's silly money. Um, but it's a series that you're going to enjoy. If you do enjoy gag manga, if you do enjoy comedy series, you will have a lot of fun with this. You will enjoy everything and if you're a fan of Yotsuba you will get away with this. I don't feel like it's quite as in-depth with Yotsuba. Yotsuba is incredibly heartwarming but this is definitely more kind of like yeah it's ridiculous it's stupid stuff go read it have a laugh that's about it and that's it from me let me know what you think in the comments of Azumanga Daio. Have you read it? And is there a particular gag that always makes you laugh? Definitely Chiyo flying away. It's always Chiyo flying away. Or Chiyo crying. In fact, Chiyo just being Chiyo is probably the, the, the most fun time. In fact, Osaka is a great, hilarious character too. And so is Sakaki. And Tomo. And not Yomi. I don't really like Yomi. But... Yeah, read it, read it, read it! <laughs>